Hello everyone. I hope you are all safe and healthy. Sad to say that we have to adjust during times like this. So guys, kung ano man yung natutunan nyo sa psych stat nyo, lahat yun ay magagamit natin dito sa experimental. Kaya I hope na natabi nyo yung mga notes nyo and I hope na nakinig kayo sa stat teacher nyo. Well, sorry na lang sa mga naging students ko. Anyway, let's start our lesson for today, which is the introduction to experimental psychology. Our objective for today is to first understand why we rely on scientific methods rather than common sense to explain a behavior. Second, you guys must also learn the principles of the scientific method. And third, the basic tools of psychological research, you must also learn that. And lastly, you guys must also understand how cause and effect is established by experimentation. Okay, so So, sana nga ay ma-accomplish natin itong mga to. Kaya huwag kayo mag skip or matutulog dito sa lesson na to. So, the first thing that we must understand is that psychology is the science of behavior. So, ano naman ang ibig sabihin nun? Tayong mga future psychology practitioners, we take a scientific approach in understanding a person's behavior. Nag-o-observe tayo, nagko-collect tayo ng data, hindi tayo basta-basta nagko-conclude sa biased opinions natin. Like for example, your boyfriend cheated on you. Tapos, inisip mo na lahat ng lalaki ay mandoloko na. Hindi dapat sila pagkatiwalaan. And nasa isip mo na that is indeed a fact. Well, actually, that is already a hasty generalization in which you concluded something that is not logically justified by sufficient and unbiased evidence. Dito sa psychology, hindi tayo nagre-rely sa biased opinions tulad ng mga feeling ko may crush siya sa akin. Sa tingin ko, mabait siya. We rely on facts. Although, meron tayong tinatawag na common sense psychology. It is our everyday, non-scientific collection of psychological data used to understand the social world and guide our behavior. For example, alam mo na nasa bad mood yung tatay mo. Hindi ka na para pa magpaalam sa tatay mo dahil alam mo na magiging sagot dyan. At yun ay, bahala ka nga sa buhay mo or huwag ka nang uuwi sa bahay. Another example is, alam mo na kakabreak lang ng dalawa mong kaibigan na magshota. Hindi mo naman sila para i-invite sa isang outing parehas, di ba? Awkward yun. Ito yung mga tipong hindi mo na kailangan i-research pa para malaman ang sagot. Common sense na ang ginagamit natin dito. Now, if we are practicing these kinds of things, then we are already a common sense psychologist. Although our common sense beliefs are derived from the data that we collect from our own experiences and what we have from others, that's why hindi lahat ng nasa common sense beliefs natin ay reliable. Isa rin sa mga nakaka-apekto sa beliefs natin ay kung kanino natin narinig ang information. For example, alam niyo ba, guys, na psychology says that if a person laughs too much, he or she is lonely? Relate ba? Kasi totoo yan. Psychologist na nga nagsabi eh. Tapos na-confirm mo pa na gawa nakaka-relate ka. Ikaw naman tong si, oo nga, oo nga, totoo yan. Psychologist says, tapos, hashtag relate pa ako. E di totoo nga yan. What's happening here is what we call overconfidence bias. Our predictions or guesses tend to feel much more correct than they actually are because we have the data or it may be accurate or not, pero it supports our belief. Kaya feeling natin, totoo yung pinahiniwalaan natin kahit na hindi reliable yung source na pinagkukunan natin. Kaya guys, hindi lahat na nababasa nyo online ay totoo. Research, research din bago mag-share ng post, okay? At dito rin napasok yung pagsiself-diagnose. Just because tumugma sa nararamdaman mo yung symptoms ng depression na nabasa mo sa internet, tapos ay sinasabi rin ng friends mo na, lagi ka malungkot, baka may depression ka. It doesn't mean that you really have depression. Kaya kailangan talaga natin na magpakonsult muna sa psychologist or psychiatrist for us to be clinically diagnosed. Now, dito sa experimental psych, We only need facts sa pag-research natin. Kaya we need to do everything in a scientific method. 
Scientific method is the step that scientists take to gather and verify information. Now, what are the important characteristics of a scientific method? First, we must have a scientific mentality. Research psychologists believe that there are specifiable causes for the way the people behave, and we can discover this through research. Kaya diba, sabi nila sa psych, pag-aaralan natin ang pattern ng behavior ng mga tao. And mapag-aaralan natin ito sa pamanggitan ng experiments and research. Tulad ng mga napapanood niyong social experiment. Inaalam nila if bakit binalik or hindi binalik yung pera. At doon nila nakikita yung pattern ng behavior ng mga tao. Next, we must gather empirical data. Ang empirical data, ito yung information na na-observe natin through our five senses. For example, you wanted to know if drinking hot chocolate in the morning will increase your performance in school. So, nag-conduct ka ng experiment. And na-observe mo na most of your participants mas tumalas ang kanilang memory. Mas nariginig nila ng maayos yung mga lessons and mas nagiging attentive sila sa class. So, those are your gathered empirical data. Pero of course, hindi yan sapat. Hindi 100% guaranteed na tama ang conclusions mo. Hindi ko kagad pwedeng sabihin na drinking hot chocolate in the morning will make you be a dense sister. Just because sa experiment ko, most of my participants have improved their performance class. Therefore, we must also seek general principles. Kailangan makahanap tayo ng mga laws or theories that will support our findings. We have two types of general principles. That is law and theory. We call it law if the principle have the generality to apply to all situations. We call it theory naman if we have the understanding on the principle and we already devised and tested an interim explanation kaso nga lang we do not have enough information to state a general law. And also, we must remember that old theories can be replaced by new theories with greater explanatory power. Kaya di ba sa thesis or research paper natin, hindi mawawala ang related studies and literatures kasi we needed to support our conclusion. Next, a central feature of a scientific method is good thinking. Our approach to the collection and interpretation of data should be systematic, objective, and rational. As researchers, we should avoid letting private beliefs and expectations influence observations or conclusions. Good thinking includes being open to new ideas even when they contradict our prior beliefs. Kaya when it comes to data gathering, kapag hindi natin nakuha yung result na gusto natin, hindi dapat natin ito baguhin. Dapat maging open tayo sa failures and experiments natin. Okay? Another important aspect of good thinking is the principle of parsimony. It is the simplicity, precision, and clarity of thoughts. Kapag nagawa tayo ng research, hindi necessary na gumamit tayo ng mabulaklak na words para magmukha tayong smart. As much as possible, we must make it reader-friendly and straight to the point. I swear, the simpler the explanation, the better. Next, we should be open to self-correction. We should accept the uncertainty of our own conclusion. There is a high chance na mapalitan ng, ang mga theories natin ng bago. Lalo na pag mas madami silang nag na evidences that supports their conclusion. Just like for example, for more than 30 years, naniniwala tayo na the link between media violence and aggressive behavior was explained by social learning theory. Sabi nila, huwag natin expose ang mga bata sa violent games, movies, or music kasi gagayahin nila yon. I-imitate nila yung mga tao na napapanood nila or sa nilalaro nila. Pero ngayon, na-replace na ng cognitive priming theory ang social learning theory because it explained more varied behavior. Sabi sa theory na ito, kapag lagi na-expose ang mga bata sa violent media like sa games, movies, etc., nade-develop nila yung tinatawag nating script. Ito yung automatic behavior or response nila if ilalagay mo sila sa isang aggressive environment or situation. Kaya subukan mong tanungin ang kakalala mong 7 years old na na-expose sa mga games na Barilan or GTA. Pag tinanong mo sila, ano ang gagawin mo pag may kaaway ka? Ang pwedeng maging sagot nila ay, 
paborin ko yan or sipain ko mukha nun is because they already developed a script for such situation. Well, going back, we also need to publicize our results to avoid duplication of researches and to exchange information with fellow researchers. And lastly, replication. We should be able to repeat our procedures and get the same results over again. Now that we are familiar with the important characteristics of scientific method, let's proceed to the three main tools of scientific method. First, we have observation. Ito yung systematic noting and recording of events. We must keep in mind that only events that are observable can be studied scientifically. Eh ma'am, kung kailangan observable, paano naman yung mga internal processes tulad ng feelings, thinking, or problem solving? Paano natin yung may record? Okay, so the key to studying internal processes is defining them as events that can be observed. For example, Gusto niyong pag-aralan yung feeling ng isang tao. Make him or her answer a mood questionnaire. Or if gusto mo naman pag-aralan yung problem solving nila, i-record mo yung time kung kailan nila matatapos yung isang intelligence test. Now, our observations should also be systematic. Kung ano ang pinasagutan mo intelligence test kay respondent A, ganun din ang kay respondent B. Same goes with the questionnaires. Consistent dapat lahat. Next tool, we have measurement. It is the assignment of numerical values to objects, events, or characteristics according to conventional rules. If kagamit tayo, let's say, ng isang questionnaire tungkol sa loneliness na tayo ang gumawa, ipapavalidate natin yun sa mga experts sa field na yun. For example, sa mga psychologists, guidance counselor, or psychometricians. Para ma-check nyo if yung ginawa nyo bang questionnaire ay makakapag-measure talaga ng loneliness. Kailangan nyo muna siyang standardize bago nyo siya gamitin sa subjects nyo. And dapat identical siya in each session. Hindi pwedeng red yung font ng questionnaire na binigay nyo sa isang subject and then black naman sa susunod. Dapat i-practice natin lagi ang uniformity. Next, we have experimentation. It is a process of testing a hypothesis in which a particular behavior will occur.